If you've logged into QuickBooks Online recently, you may have noticed that it looks a little bit different. And if you have seen that, you are not alone. The thing is, is that QuickBooks or Intuit is going to be rolling out a completely new view in 2025. And that view is going to change the functionality a little bit and not necessarily what the tool does, but how we use the tool. So this video is going to be a complete beginner's guide to how to use this new user interface of QuickBooks Online in 2025. Whether you are brand new to QuickBooks and you've never used it before, you're not exactly sure what it is, or if you are a seasoned bookkeeper or a business owner DIYing your own books, this video is going to be for you. Before we go any further, my name is Hannah Smolinski. I am the founder of Clara CFO Group, and this channel is really dedicated towards helping you and your small business and understanding your financial technology. So whether it's your accounting system, your payroll system, your bill pay, your accounts receivable, all of the technology and the software that's now out there to help support your accounting function, we want to be able to teach you about that here. So if that sounds good, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We'd love to have you here. So what I want to cover with you guys today is going to be showing you this brand new interface and where things are. I'm going to show you what it used to look like and then where what it looks like now so you can try to get a sense of where you need to click to use your QuickBooks every day. And then we're also going to show some of the AI updates that QuickBooks now has. They are trying to use AI to help improve bookkeeping processes. And then I'm also going to show you just the basic functionality of QuickBooks. What can you do with QuickBooks? If you've never used it before, what can QuickBooks do for you? And then I'm going to mention a few videos that I'm going to do as follow-up videos to this so you can get a little bit more into the nitty-gritty and the how-to so you can stay tuned for those. And I'm going to show you how to get the best price for QuickBooks Online. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the brand new interface of QuickBooks Online in late 2025. Let's go. All right, here I am in a sample company of QuickBooks Online. And what you will see right away, if you are familiar with QuickBooks Online, you're gonna say, whoa, this is very different. This whole navigation up here at the top, we're on the dashboard right now. You can see because it's slightly highlighted over here on the left. But this whole navigation up on the top is a completely new look for QuickBooks. They've got these little icons. They've got this horizontal layout where in the past, most of the navigation has been down the left left-hand side on the vertical. This is kind of a little bit of a shock. Let's compare that real quick to what the dashboard used to look like. Here's an example of what the dashboard used to look like in the old view. So if you are still using this version of QuickBooks Online, you can go to my tutorial here, which has been viewed over 600,000 times, and it has really helped people understand the, the layout of QuickBooks Online. But it's important that you know that this look and this user interface is being phased out. And I've seen that uh, some notes saying that October 2025 is when this view will be phased out and everybody's going to be moved and shifted over to the new view. So if that's the case, you might want to go ahead and start getting familiar with the new view. Okay, before we get any further, I want to make sure to tell you if you're not already using QuickBooks Online and you want to start using it because of this video or because everybody's been telling you it's the best accounting system for small businesses, which I believe that it is, let me tell you how to get a 30% off for an entire year, which is the best deal you can find on the internet, and a 30-day free trial. So you get the 30-day free trial and before you have to put your credit card information into the system. And then um, if you don't put your credit card into the system, System, then it just defaults to regular, um, you know, you'd have to pay full price. But if you get your credit card into the system before that 30 days, then you get 30% off for the entire year. So again, that is the best deal that you can get on the internet by using this link, financialtechlab.com slash QBO. So make sure if you're going to sign up for QuickBooks, make sure you get the best deal possible. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys what the pricing looks like. This is after the discount. So for example, Simple Start normal price is $38. With the discount, it's $26.60. Advanced is normally $275 per month, and then with with the discount, it's $192.50. So you can see they've already calculated the discount here for you. Um, you can go directly to the QuickBooks site and do the comparison, but this is the best deal that you can get on the internet. And if you use the link for um, that we've given you, it does help support the channel. So we would very much appreciate it. So let's move on under this new 
um, the new user interface. So you can see on top that we've got these little icons. Let's go ahead and just start clicking on them so you can see that the navigation has changed. So once you click on those, they're calling them apps up at the top, they will kind of create a new navigation down the left-hand side. So um, some of these are going to be things that you're familiar with if you're used to QuickBooks Online. You'll be able to see your client overview. You can do a books review. I'm going to spend some time talking about bank transactions. The integrated transactions, this is where you can connect other apps to your QuickBooks Online. So this is really great if you have third-party um, sales platforms like Shopify or PayPal or Square, um, eBay, etc. You can connect those. Um, you can look at receipts. This is where you can reconcile. You can set up and create rules to make your accounting really easy. And anytime the same types of transactions come in, you basically are training and telling QuickBooks what to do with those. Um, you can customize your chart of accounts, which is, um, we'll get into what a chart of accounts is, but it's basically all of the kind of the buckets that you're going to put your financial information into, and it helps your reporting be more clear specifically for your business. And um, you, this is where you can look at recurring transactions. And then if you use an accountant, and then you can also use QuickBooks Live Experts. So going down the left hand side here, you can see Expenses and bills, this was similar to what expenses was in the old format as well. Really, this is not a whole lot different. We've got the overview, expense transactions. You can look at a list of vendors. You can look at your bills. You can pay bills through QuickBooks. You can track mileage. You can pay contractors, and you can look at your list of contractors, and then you can do 1099s. So none of that is really new functionality. QuickBooks in the online has always done that, uh, but this is just kind of the slightly new view. And then um, sales and getting paid, this is going to be similar to the old view it also we called it sales as well so this is where you're going to have your invoices your customers um, this also now has something called sales channels this is new connect to new sales channels this is your your Etsy Shopify Amazon QuickBooks payout this is when you have processed merchant transactions through QuickBooks Online. They will um, show you what those are. So we've got the, um, the QuickBooks payouts, which is great. And then channel payouts this is going to be from your sales channels that were, were above. And products and services. So products and services are going to be very specific things that you want to have show up on your invoices or your sales receipts that can help um, you just be more clear as you are invoicing your customers. Um, this, that also, you can also track inventory if you're using the right level of QuickBooks. I think, I believe that's plus or above. You can track inventory. Um, so that's something that you can set up there as well. And then customer hub, this is going to be your leads, customers, estimates, and reviews, um, which this review thing is kind of new. I haven't seen this before, but it looks like they're trying to help on the sales side with not only like tracking your customers, but now like how can you how can you also um, improve your reputation? So this is this is a new feature that maybe we can explore in the future if you guys would like that. Let me know in the comment section below if that's of interest to you. They've also got something called leads, which is relatively new as well. I know that that is something that um, they have been working on, but I will skip that for now. Um, they've got this new app called Team, and this is really just a list of your employees, contractors, and workers comp. This is not payroll. Down here below is payroll, and I believe this diamond would basically mean that you need to opt in um, to be able to get that. Um, you, you need to be paying for payroll in order to get the payroll app. The same with inventory. This level of QuickBooks that I'm in right now does not have inventory, so you would have to pay to get into that. Um, time tracking is something that there's an app for that if we want to put time entries in here, although for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be working at the moment. <laughs> uh, we're not going to, I wasn't going to dig into time anyway today, so that's fine. Just kind of want to show you guys the types of things that can be tracked in QuickBooks, sales tax, business taxes, and then they have um, some lending. So QuickBooks uh, actually has a lending 
arm where you can get a line of credit, you can leverage even your invoices to get loans on invoices. So there is ability to get some financing through QuickBooks. As a CFO, I wouldn't recommend going to QuickBooks first, try to go through a tradi traditional bank or credit union, um, but that is a possibility if you are kind of in a bind and you need to go somewhere for funding. So that's kind of just a little bit of the the types of things that you're gonna find in QuickBooks Online here. Let's go back to the dashboard because I wanted to show you all those things we just went through on the left-hand side. You can easily navigate there across the top here. This is a, kind of a new thing for QuickBooks Online as well is this little blue star insignia. It's kind of their AI assistant um, symbol that anytime you see that, there's some kind of AI assist. So. Um, this is calling it business feed. So it's telling me I have an overdue invoice. It's saying that um, we've got some insights on the expenses in the business and it's going to be, um, I, we can click on this and it's gonna be kind of making recommendations and also saying like, hey, you might be able to do this, you might be able to do that. Um, so here's an example. This is um, for an invoice that's outstanding to advanced consulting, it is overdue. And so the AI assistant has already drafted a reminder for me. And so if I wanted to go and look at that, I could review that now and then go ahead and send out a reminder. I could make any changes that I want and then I could send that out. There's also, um, they're starting to play around with more agents over here. You can see um, Intuit's AI agent. So an accounting agent automates, automates categorization and expense tracking, and then a payments agent suggests faster ways to get paid by optimizing your invoicing. So for example, um, I did notice down here, the payments agent was recommending that I add an automatic late fee to invoices because it noticed that this sample company, the invoices were late. And so it's saying, hey, if you do this, it might you know, allow you to collect faster and make a little bit of extra money on, on the invoice. So that's like a recommendation that was made here. I'm not like blown away at this point by this like AI assistant, but I just wanted to show you like whenever you see this kind of little blue symbol, there's gonna be like maybe some additional insight you can click on it and just see if there's anything that's valuable to you. So coming back to the dashboard, I wanna show you that you can also actually have a dashboard here. Now, if I had the ability, I would actually remove this business feed because that's not adding a whole lot of value for me right now, but it is nice to see this business at a glance view. I do like this um, and you can customize this. So if you want to move around these tiles to show what you wanna see, I've actually already customized this a little bit. I removed some, some tiles that didn't have any information. You can change, for example, you can move all of these things around, but you can also, let me just save that real quick. You can also change the date range. So um, if I wanted to see this fiscal year to date, I could put that there because I want to see like where we are year to date. Or if I want to see what are my expenses looking like this month, I could do that. Or what were my expenses last month? I could do that. It looks like maybe I don't have all of my financial data. All of this is only going to be as good as the data that has been added into the account. So if for some reason you haven't done your bookkeeping and you're for the last month and you're trying to get information on your dashboard for last month, well, you're not gonna have good information because you didn't add those transactions into the books. So this, it can be kind of helpful. And then going back to that customize, you can add and remove widgets here. So if there's anything that's really important to you, you can put it in here. Like I was noticing the sales didn't have any data on it. So I'm just gonna take that one out. It doesn't really help me, okay? That is something that I, I like a little bit better than the previous version of the dashboard, but they're not that different. Let's move on through just the navigation of this new interface. So let's go over here on the left-hand side. So you can bookmark things. So if you were a heavy QuickBooks user in the past and you really liked that left-hand navigation and you wanna have, you know, customize your left-hand navigation, have some quick and easy bookmarks to so say, hey, I know exactly the pages that I am using all day, every day. For example, bank transactions, you can add your, um, you can add bookmarks over here. So that is something that's really nice and I can go and I can click on that and then it takes me to the bank transaction page. We're gonna get there. Don't freak out if you um, are worried <laughs> about seeing this new page because yes, it is pretty different. I'm gonna do a whole video on how to use this new bank feed 
um, view, but I am gonna show it to you in just a second. So if you wanna bookmark anything, you can do that. The business feed I've already showed you guys. We showed that a little bit earlier. Reporting. So one of my favorite features about QuickBooks Online is the reporting. I love that they have, you know, quick and easy balance sheet, profit and loss. We can do accounts receivable aging. We have all these other reports as well. We can do detailed reports. We can do more high level reports. Uh, we can do reports on who owes us. We can do reports on our customers. We can do reports on AP and um, so, on, so on and so forth. Now, remember your reporting is only as good as your data coming in. So if you're not doing a good job tracking vendors on your expenses and you're not doing a good job tracking your customers or your sub customers or things like that, then the reporting is not going to give you the level of detail that you'd like to see. So best practice is to make sure that the um, transactions coming in are being coded really well, that they're coded to the right transactions and that they have a vendor or a customer associated to them. And then that's going to help you get better reporting out of it if you're looking for these more detailed reports. Okay, so that's just kind of a, an aside. We are going to do a video on reports as well. And then over here, my apps, this is what we've already gone through. So it, they've kind of just like changed up the navigation and then they've added these icons. So it's really not that different. I don't want you guys to get like too worried about like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to relearn how to do all my bookkeeping because all of this is different. It's just not that different. It's just, you just need to find the new place to go and click. Now, why they decided to change everything up is, a big question of mine. I'm sure they have their reasons, but I don't think anybody asked for the user interface to be changed and moved around like this. And for whatever reason, they thought it was important. So that's a little aside. You also down here can pen any apps that you want. So you can customize this left hand bar as well and decide which apps you would like penned. Um, so, you know, they, they're giving you some, some, ability to customize so that you can have your tasks, whatever you need to do when you go into QuickBooks Online, um, that you can find it really quickly and easily. Okay, a couple other things I wanna show you about the interface, some things that really haven't changed much. For example, is this um, create button up here in the top left-hand corner. This is pretty similar to what it has been in the past, not a whole lot of changes here. This is where you can quickly create an invoice, you can quickly create an expense, a journal entry, whatever it is, you've got that quick access right there. And and another thing that's kind of a staple of navigating QuickBooks Online is this gear icon up here in the top right hand corner. So if you click on that, this is going to uh, allow you access to your accounts and settings. This is going to allow you to add and manage users. You can do custom forms. You can adjust your chart of accounts. You can look at payroll, workers comp, and so on and so forth. Um, it says get the desktop app, app here. That is not QuickBooks desktop just so you know that is a separate product that is you know being phased out this is just to use QuickBooks online with a desktop app um, and then you know this has all your lists and then other tools here and um, right now there's this button down here at the bottom that says that I that I can switch back to the old user interface view if I want to but you can see here it says if an account is using the old view, they will be automatically opted back into this current experience because the previous QuickBooks Online experience is not going to be supported anymore. So just FYI, it is being phased out the old view and that this new user interface view is the one that is going to be our new QBO, okay? So um, you can also manage your subscription and billing up here, and then you can switch companies if you have multiple companies and multiple QuickBooks Online accounts. Well, that is the yeah. beginner's tutorial about what you will find in QuickBooks Online and what this whole new view is all about. So I would love to hear a couple things. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions about how to do anything in QuickBooks Online because I'm going to be making more videos and I wanna make sure that I'm addressing your issues and your questions. And then what do you think about the new interface? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, do you think it doesn't matter? I would love to know what your opinion is. So give me your thoughts in the comment section below and I will be there to engage with all of you. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.